What are you looking at your watch for? We've only been here half an hour. I'm worried about Captain Peacock. I've never known him so late. So I explained the situation to Mrs Axelby. Well, she said... Handsome is as handsome does. That's just the trouble. I said he didn't. <laughs> yeah, any more news about you and that bias job? Uh, well, I've got an interview with a lady from personnel. Oh. Who's personnel? <laughs> oh, they sent somebody down from head office and they ask you a lot of questions. Usually it's a man and then, of course, it's a pushover. I just wear a short skirt and cross my legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of there in a minute. <laughs> Rolling round the world and looking for the sunshine. Hip ah, Mrs Slocum, just the lady I'm looking for. Do you miss out on that important engagement and you find that you cannot spare the time for that little extra sunny on your coiffure? Do you wake up in the morning feeling like you've been shot out of a cannon? <laughs> Do you wish your hair was like this, but when you look in a mirror, it looks like this? <laughs> what is that? That's a new display model for beauty bonds. The new washable party wig. You can wash it, crush it, screw it, boil it, and it still comes out bam box fresh. How's that? <laughs> Take it off. And if you're not off the floor in one minute, I shall report you to Captain Peacock. Oh, no, you won't, cos he ain't come in yet. And what's more, you know Mr Rumbold's secretary? She ain't come in neither. <laughs> what's that supposed to mean? No, nothing, nothing. <clears throat> not unless you happen to see them both come out of the duplicating cupboard together. <laughs> unless you see two hands clasped underneath the canteen table. And what is more, who did he keep using his blow tickler on at the Christmas party? <laughs> oh, yes. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> He's much too old. Yeah, and she's ever so common. Well, it's nothing a matter of being common, darling. You ain't exactly Easter Rancy, do you? <laughs> Do you mind? We live in a detached house. Only because they pulled down all the other ones round. <laughs> <laughs> No sign of Captain Peacock yet? No, I've never known him so late, Mr Granger. As a matter of fact, I was just saying to Mr Lucas that I'd never known him so late, wasn't I, Mr Lucas? Oh, you were, you were, Mr Humphreys, yes. And I was just saying that Mr Rumbold's secretary wasn't in yet, either. No, that's right, he did. He just said that Mr Rumbold's secretary wasn't in yet, either. Then he went like that. <laughs> what did you mean by that? Haven't you noticed it's been going on ever since the Christmas party? I said we shouldn't have had mistletoe. It always causes trouble. No, no, it wasn't that. It was the postman's knock. No, oh, it was very badly organised. I got a parcel with 12 stamps on it, called out for three and got the night watchman. <laughs> You're lucky I got Mrs Slocum. <laughs> I didn't see Captain Peacock at all that evening. Oh, well, he was with Mr Rumbold's secretary. Yeah, and then he told her that we were going to play sardines and he took her into the broom cupboard. Mm, we'd never have found him yet, except he caught, caught his blue tickler in the door. Yeah. <laughs> she said she'd missed her last bus, so he said he'd give her a lift home to Reading. Mm, he was last seen <laughs> surrounded by policemen playing Amazing Grace on a breathalyzer bag. After that, Men's apparel. <laughs> Assistant 13 speaking. Unlucky for some. <laughs> Mrs. Peacock, can I help you? Yes. Mrs. Peacock. Yes? She wants to know if Captain Peacock got back safely from his conference in Birmingham. Sales conference in Birmingham? <laughs> he hasn't been to a sales conference in Birmingham. Yeah, but you can't tell her that. I know. No, it's not convenient at the moment. You've come straight through to a fitting room. How's that for you, sir? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just serving Fife Robertson with the spot at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Captain Peacock is dealing with a customer elsewhere. Probably in Reading. <laughs> He's probably in bedding. <laughs> I'll give him your message as soon as he comes on the floor and get him to ring you. I see. You'll ring him yourself. <laughs> bye bye, Mrs. Peacock. Thank you. <laughs> what about that then? Well, it proves one thing he hasn't been home. I do hope he hasn't gone off the rails. I, I did myself, you know, when I was in bathroom fittings. <laughs> There was a girl in haberdashery. I got her into trouble. What, with the supervisor? <laughs> in the club. <laughs> oh, you mean the social club? The pudding club. <laughs> Do you think you invented it? <laughs> Look, there he is now. Ooh, ooh, and there she is. Don't let him see us looking. 
Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> Tending to ignore each other. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see that? Carry on as though nothing has happened. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Humphreys. Oh, good morning, Captain Peacock. Good morning, Mrs. Slocum. Good afternoon, Captain Peacock. <laughs> yes, I am a bit late. There's a reason, of course. Yeah, and here it comes. And <laughs> the next object is a lie. <laughs> a lie. <laughs> yes, I, I'm afraid uh, I overslept. So did Mrs. Peacock. And the alarm failed to go off. Yes, well, well the alarm's gone off all right now. Mrs. Peacock just phoned. <laughs> What did she say? She wanted to know if you got back all right. Uh, how thoughtful of her. From your sales conference in Birmingham. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, well, uh, I, I can explain that. Yes. You'd better explain to her now. <laughs> uh, men's ready made. <laughs> oh, hello, my dear. How sweet of you to ring. <laughs> uh, what on earth makes you think that I wasn't in Birmingham? <laughs> How could your, your brother have seen me driving through Reading? <laughs> but, darling, there must be lots of, lots of Fords with a, with a broken rear window, missing hubcaps and a dent in the rear wing. <laughs> huh? Well, if he had a girl with her, that proves it wasn't me. <laughs> Where was I when you last called? In bedding. I was in bedding. No, not Reading, bedding. <laughs> Look, dear, there's really no need for you to come over here to, to talk over anything. We, we can easily have a little chat when I get home. <laughs> no, 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 look, I must go. We, we've got a lot of customers. OK, yeah, that's, that's fine, yes. You've been a very attentive young man. Well, thank you, Mr Robertson. And don't worry if the sparring's a bit long. It's bound to ride up with wear. <laughs> As you can hear, dear, we are very busy. Yes. Bye-bye, darling. <laughs> <laughs> All this must seem a, a bit strange to you. No, not when you watch Coronation Street. <laughs> Don't worry, Stephen, we'll back you up. <laughs> You're referring to the rumours that there is something between Mr Rumbo's secretary and myself, I most categorically deny it. Psst, psst, psst. Uh, excuse me a moment. Not here. Mr Rumbo wants to see you. We well, don't have to make a secret about that. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> she just came to tell me that Mr. Rumble wishes to see me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's none of my business, but while you're in there, I should get Rumble to back up your story about the sales conference in Birmingham. Well, I can't overlook your lateness. I shall have to forward this report. Come in. Ah, I shall only be a moment, Peacock. I'm just taking down the details of why my secretary was so very late this morning. Now, let's just run over this. Uh, you spent the night with Stephen in a car shelter. No. Now with my friend Stephanie in car shorten. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and by mistake in the morning, she took the Homburg from the bedside table. Handbag. Uh, oh, yes, handbag. Uh, with your season ticket in it, and by the time she returned, you were late. Uh, do you have anything else to add? I'm sure she hasn't. No, sir. Yes, well, I can't promise that you won't hear more of this. That's, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help feeling that that girl's getting into bad company. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Peacock, you too were rather late this morning. No connection, sir. <laughs> Wasn't suggesting that there was, but I would like an explanation. Well, sir, for reasons I'd rather not go into, I told Mrs. Peacock that I was with you at a sales conference in Birmingham. But I wasn't at a sales conference in Birmingham. I know that, sir, but uh, couldn't you pretend that we were at a sales conference in Birmingham? Is this some kind of game? No, sir, but uh, if Mrs. Peacock asks you, it's, it's absolutely vital that you bear out my story. Uh, after all, we have known each other 14 years, man and boys were. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peacock, but I was in London last night, and our friendship is not strong enough to make me say that I was 90 miles away in Birmingham. Watford Gap. <laughs> Rambold here. It's my secretary's father. Yes, we were rather worried about it too. Uh, but there's no cause for alarm. Um, 
she spent the night with Stephen in a car shelter. Stephanie in car shelter! <laughs> I'm sorry, it's my glasses. Uh, with Stephanie in car shelter. I see. Oh, dear. Well, you better do as you think best. Mm. Yes, goodbye. <sighs> These young girls, all the tissue of lies. The father phoned Stephanie, and uh, you can guess the rest. She didn't spend the night in car shelter? Precisely. Has he any inkling where she did spend the night? No, no, but, but he's coming here to see the girl and find out. I suppose it's absolutely out of the question to have the rest of the day off. <laughs> Rambold here. Mrs Cannon from Personnel's coming over in five minutes to interview Mrs Slocum. Is it all right if she uses your office? Yes, yes, of course. Mm. Uh, well, that'll be all, Peacock. Thank you, sir. You've been most helpful. Uh, oh, Peacock, I tell you what I can do. I can try to be elsewhere if Mrs. Peacock calls, hmm? Thank you, sir. Uh, get me Mrs. Slocum, will you? Oh, it's just as for you. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, underwear. Yeah. Oh, in your office, Mr. Rumbold. Oh, yes, thank you very much. Oh, wish me luck. I'm going to be interviewed now with the lady from personnel. You know, I think I'll wear my glasses. Make me look older. I mean, I don't want to look too young for the job. On the other hand... <laughs> I don't want to look too old, uh. <laughs> Everything all right, Captain Peacock? Uh, yes, up to a point. <laughs> Must Mr Rambold help for? Uh, let's put it this way. If one were drowning, Mr. Rumbold would be the first to hold out an electric cow prod. <laughs> here, here, Captain Peacock. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Get on with it. What is it? Well, here's the bad news. Your wife has just come through the main doors. And the good news is that there's a sailor bulletproof vest down the sport department. <laughs> You know what I do in cases like this? I just bare my soul and reveal everything. <laughs> then run like hell. <laughs> I'd be most grateful if you'd both stay within earshot. She won't make a scene in public. Stand by, here's the lift. Blimey, the worry hasn't half aged her. <laughs> that is not my wife. Oh. This is my wife. Stephen! Oh, hello, my dear. I, I didn't expect to see you. Where were you? When, dear? If you're going to prevaricate with me, I shall kick you right in the middle of the gentleman's department. <laughs> Can't we discuss this when I get home, my sweet? You won't be going home. They're changing the locks now, my precious. <laughs> but we were going to the old comrade's dance tonight. You promised to press my dinner jacket. I've kept my promise. I have pressed it. Right down the lavatory. <laughs> and I've pulled the chain. <laughs> but we bought that dinner jacket together. I remember it was an export reject. I cleaned your shoes as well, with your shirt. Not to mention polishing the silver with your tie and sweeping the chimney with your pyjamas. She's very domesticated, isn't she? <laughs> you were with that girl, weren't you? What girl? Oh, I heard all about you at the Christmas party with your blue tickler. You were just graceful. You were a figure of fun. I, I was not a figure of fun. I, I behaved with perfect dignity. Is that not so, Mr Humphreys? Quite right, Captain Peacock. And the stories about your blue tickler are a gross exaggeration. <laughs> you didn't even use it after you trapped it in the broom cupboard, did you? Let me tell you this, Stephen Peacock. You've used your blue tickler for the last time. I'm going to see Mr Rumbold, and when I've told him everything about you, you'll be back where you started, sweeping up in the stockroom. <laughs> The lady from personnel just called to say she's sorry for the delay. She won't be a minute. Oh, that's quite all right. <laughs> Enter. <laughs> is this Mr. Rumble's office? Oh, yes, that's right. Where is he? Uh, well, I don't know, but I'm sure he'll be back before long. Do you work for him? Well, yes, I do. You're the one, then, aren't you? Oh, I sincerely hope so. <laughs> You're older than I expected. <laughs> well, I'm only a little over 40, and though I do say so as shouldn't, I have all the enthusiasm of a younger woman, <laughs> combined with a great deal of experience. <laughs> You're pretty cool, aren't you? 
Well, of course, it's not the first time I've been up for this sort of thing. <laughs> You've done it before, have you? Oh, yes. <laughs> I believe at jumping at every opportunity. <laughs> Anything to get out of underwear. <laughs> well, see, well, there isn't much room behind the counter for, <laughs> for a woman of my imagination. <laughs> You're very outspoken, aren't you? Well, you know what us northerners are. You were in Reading, weren't you? Reading? <laughs> um, oh, come along now. Tell me the truth. Were you or were you not in Reading? Uh, will it help if I said I was? <laughs> I knew it. That's all I need to know. Don't you want to know any details? I've got quite enough for my solicitor to send the necessary documents. And I shall see to it that your name appears in every newspaper. Ooh. And they'll all know you for what you are. Fame at last. <laughs> <laughs> and from now you can take care of the gallant Stephen Peacock. You can iron his shirts and darn his socks. And you can bring up his early morning tea when he's sitting up in bed in those hideous striped pyjamas. <laughs> they never mentioned anything about that when they advertised the vacancy on the notice board. <laughs> yeah, Captain Peacock, you want the bad news or the very bad news? <laughs> Just get to the point. Well, the, the girl's father's here on the premises, looking for the man what spent the night with his daughter. Glass of water for Captain Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> I should save it till he's had the very bad news. <laughs> uh, and Mrs Peacock was last seen chasing Mrs Slocum down the staff stairs, hitting her over the head with her umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Granger, yeah. would you take over for me for a few moments? With pleasure. Stand by to make it permanent. Hey, Charles Stevens, anything to help? Oh, uh, 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 Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I'm very free, Mr. Gray. <laughs> Would you take over for me while I take over for Captain Peacock? <laughs> <laughs> shall I take over from you, Mr. Humphreys, or shall I stay standing here? <laughs> oh, just look at that action. <laughs> He's wanted that job for 15 years. <laughs> the mind is willing, but the bunions are weak. <laughs> Take over from Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> it don't look like she got the job. <laughs> hey, look her! It's the girl's father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good morning, sir. Can I be of any help? Are you the person in charge of this department? I, I am. Yes. No, I say you're the one who's ruined my daughter's reputation. <laughs> You mean the girl who was in haberdashery? <laughs> oh, so there's another one. <laughs> but that was 25 years ago. But you're still at it. <laughs> you see this? This was for my daughter's wedding next week. Now her fiancé has walked out on her. And why? All because of you. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Green. All right, yeah, that's right. Right. You sit there, Mr. Green. Are you all right? What? Did I you... I said, are you all right? No, of course I'm not all right. How can I be all right with currents in both ears? <laughs> I'm going to sue, you know. You do that, Mr Granger. Don't forget the simulated cream up the nostrils. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Mr Grace. Uh, Mr Grace has very kindly agreed to preside at this uh, sort of inquiry into the affair concerning Captain Peacock on my secretary. I would like to object to the word affair being used at this stage. There has been no affair. He wasn't using the word affair in that sense. Uh, shall we call it the occurrence? Uh, I'm going to sue for that too. <laughs> sue for what, Mr Granger? The currents in my ear. <laughs> I'll explain to him. We haven't got to your currents yet. No, they're very deep. I should probably have to be anaesthetized and syringed. And carry on, he'll catch up. <laughs> we also have to consider the case of the assault by Mrs. Peacock on Mrs. Slocum, an assault witnessed by Mr. Harmon. Yes, I, I, I had one up my nose, but I got it out. <laughs> had what up your nose? Salted almond. <laughs> We are talking about Mrs. Slocum. She gets up everyone's nose. <laughs> Don't start. I am just in the mood. <laughs> uh, 
That was Joe Loss, wasn't it? <laughs> What was Joe lost, Mr. Gray? In the mood. <laughs> yes, yes, you're quite right, sir, but we're discussing the assault on Mrs. Slocum. Yes, those terrible fellows, those band boys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir, shall I serve out the coffee while we sort it out as far as we've got? Uh, no, no, we must get on. We also have to consider the cake on Mr. Granger's head, uh, with the cream up the nose and the currants in the ears. <laughs> now you're rambling. Did you get all that down? Every word, well, sir. Well, cross it out. <laughs> Perhaps if we took things in the order in which they happened, we might avoid confusion. Hmm? Some oaks will have to send for Ellery Queen. <laughs> he would be the best Ellery to send for. <laughs> Well, I, th I think perhaps you're right, Captain Peacock. Uh, Mr. Grace and I are most anxious that, at the end of the day, every party concerned should leave this room completely satisfied. Does that include Mr. Grace's secretary as well? <laughs> Mr. Lucas, this is a serious matter. My whole future to Grace Brothers is at stake. Well, I think you should be sent right off. Uh, well, well, Mr. Lucas is a material witness to you being hit on the head. Yeah, I was the one who cheered. <laughs> It's no laughing matter. She could well have suffered brain damage if it hadn't been for the fact she'd had her hair double lacquered for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr Harmon, ask my secretary to come in, will you? Uh, yes, certainly, sir. I have kept Mrs Peacock separate from her in case they got together and have each other on the carpet. <laughs> I've also taken the liberty of confiscating her umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Call in, Miss Monica Hazelwood. Uh, uh, do take a seat, please. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see? He's pretending to ignore her. I bet it's been going on for years. Uh, now, Miss Hazelwood, I'm going to ask you a direct question. I have no right to do so, and, of course, you don't have to answer it. And if you do answer it, nobody's going to hold it against you or use it in any future proceedings. Do you understand? Yes, sir. It hardly seems worth her coming, does it? <laughs> Did you, or did you not, spend the night with Captain Peacock? I object. Uh, spend the night has many connotations. One can spend the night quite innocently in someone's company. If you mean, did you have an affair with me, then say so. Oh, very well. Did you have an affair with Captain Peacock? Certainly not. Thank you. Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> it's absurd. Ooh, it's unthinkable. <laughs> <laughs> You've made your point, Miss Hazelwood. <laughs> a, a plain no would have been quite sufficient. <laughs> to Sultana. <laughs> I beg your pardon? It's just fell out of my left ear. <laughs> I, I thought it was a current between to Sultana. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Granger. Shall I put it on the table as exhibit A? <laughs> Damn, I've dropped the thing. It's all right, it's Miss Brahms is sitting on it. Here Get I go. Off. Oh, look at that, it's still warm. <laughs> A bit flat, but it's still warm. Allow me. Exhibit A. I can hear much better now. I think the only way to settle this is for me to give a, a detailed account in front of my wife of all the precise circumstances that led to this unfortunate chain of events. Yes, 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 I think you're right. Uh, Mr. Harmon, ask Mrs. Peacock to come in, will you? Yes. Call her, Mrs. Peacock. Uh, please sit down. <laughs> Who's this? This is Captain Peacock's wife, sir. Oh. Sooner him than me. <laughs> uh, is that her? Uh, that is my secretary, yes. in the Navy, we had a petty officer just like that. <laughs> I noticed she didn't burst into tears when she thought it was me. <laughs> Funny, that. <laughs> I'm so sorry, it was such a shock. First of all, there have been rumours for some time that I've been paying attention to Miss Hazel. It has been said that at the Christmas party, I pursued her with my blow tickler. <laughs> uh, Kibbe B, one blow tickler. <laughs> Uh, 
Now, I should like to make it perfectly clear that I pursued everybody with my blow tickler. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> you know, we all did a lot of blow tickling. I think we can ignore that. Yeah. Cross out the blow tickling. <laughs> Secondly, it has been said that I held Miss Hazelwood's hand in the canteen. That is true. Ah, now we're getting down to the gritty nitty. <laughs> I was comforting her. I suspect she was frightened by the toad in the hole. <laughs> we were discussing marriage. <laughs> Emotional woman, isn't she? <laughs> her marriage, her forthcoming marriage to her fiance. Now, she was asking my advice. I was against it. I thought she was too young and inexperienced. So you took her out to give her some experience. <laughs> I did not. On the night in question, she was distressed. So I took her to Beppo's cafe for a coffee. Mm, big spender. <laughs> I tried to dissuade her from the irrevocable step of getting married. Because of your own unhappy experience. But I didn't say that. No, but you looked it. Sound as you got, please. Break clean. <laughs> I succeeded. She phoned her fiance and called it off. Am I correct? Oh, yes. Oh, what a He has a remarkable effect on women, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, he was so good-looking. And now he's got nobody. Story of my life. <laughs> Miss Hazelwood was in a, in a state similar to the one you see her in now, so I, I thought it best to uh, run her home in my car. Uh, six miles outside Reading, I broke down. It, it was raining, and uh, I tried to restart, but uh, there must have been an electrical fault because there was no current in my battery. <laughs> I thought the currents were in Granger's ear. <laughs> no, no, sir. That was a sultana. <laughs> Very complicated, isn't it? <laughs> uh, we waited until dawn when a patrol van started me up again. Just a minute, just a minute. What happened between the time the car broke down and daylight? I suggested that Miss Hazelwood climb into the back. That's exactly what I would have done. <laughs> I sat behind the wheel all night, trying to think what to say to the woman I love. Why not jump in the front for a quick cuddle? <laughs> Quiet, Lucas. Foolishly, I asked Mr. Rumble to, to purge himself. Quite correctly, he refused so to do. For, after all, when the final account is balanced up in the book of life, we are men of integrity. What I've said is true, and I swear it as a God-fearing man and an ex-officer of the Royal Army Service Corps. Mrs. Peacock, if ever I've heard the truth from the lips of a man, I've heard it today. I'm sure you can doubt your husband no longer. I didn't think people talk like this anymore. <laughs> Darling, I believe you. No. <laughs> well, that's all settled then. And uh, on behalf of Grace Brothers, May we hope that you will both sail life's stormy seas into the calm waters of old age, safely and irremovably together. We probably shall. 